It's time again to hear from the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit. This weekly sermon podcast comes to you from Sharonville and the hills surrounding Cincinnati, Ohio. And here now is Pastor Dave. If you'll take your Bible and turn with me to John chapter 14 this morning. Okay, you've got your Bible there in John chapter 14. Let's now look at another instance of knowing and not knowing in the Gospel of John. This is a sermon I've entitled, Knowing the Way. C.S. Lewis said, In reality, moral rules are directions for running the human machine. Every moral rule is there to prevent a breakdown or a strain or a friction in the running of that machine. When you're being taught how to use any machine, the instructor keeps on saying, no, don't do it like that, because, of course, there are all sorts of things that look all right and seem to you to be all right, and perhaps the natural way of treating the machine, but they don't really work. Jesus here in John chapter 14 is going to tell us how to know the way. So let's begin with verse 1. Verse 1 of John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. We're going to begin today with verse 4. Verses 1 through 3 are, are very popular. We know them, maybe you know them by heart, words of Christ that bring comfort and hope, especially the time of the death of a loved one, that there is a place prepared. But we're going to begin today with verse 4, and I want you to notice what Jesus says to the disciples. Now, there are two disciples that are prominent here in this passage. First is Thomas. Thomas speaks up here, and then after Thomas, Philip. So we have two different disciples, both engaging Christ in this conversation about knowing the way. Look at what Thomas has to say. Well, first, let's look at the words of Christ. Verse 4. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Now, does Jesus assume something here? Does he assume the best of his disciples? Or is he hoping that at least they're following him? Because notice what he he said in verse 1. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So then he says in verse 4, whither I go, ye know. So I suppose he's hoping at least that they've been listening to what he has to say. Because if we were to answer the question, where are you going... If we were listening, we'd have said, well, you're going to your father's house where there are mansions. And perhaps we would have made the jump to the conclusion that's heaven. That's where God is. And the way you know, man, maybe a little bit harder, but he's been saying it to them all along. 
So I, you know, when I first read that, I thought, why did Jesus say, and whither I go, you know, and the way you know? He's assuming they know something. But I don't think it's that Jesus is assuming the best of his disciples. I think it's that Jesus knows they don't know, and he wants to say, oh, here's what you know. You know where I'm going, and you know how I'm going to get there. And somebody is going to speak up. So, you know, the guilty dog's going to bark, and it's Thomas and Philip. Now, Thomas, we've seen, you know, before, we're gonna, we saw him back in chapter 11 when he said to the rest of the disciples, well, let's go with him and die with him, you know, when Jesus was going to heal Lazarus because he was going back into Judea. We're going to see him again in chapter, is it 20, 21, when he shows up and he says, I won't believe until I stick my finger in the print of the nails and in the side where the spear was, you know, and then Jesus shows up and Thomas says, my Lord and my God. But we have him here in chapter 14, and he says, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. Aha. So what Jesus had meant to draw out a conversation about knowing where he was going has happened, and it's Thomas. Thomas is now the voice. Oh, and before I go any further, before I go any further, I I think I must make this statement. You understand now that from chapter 12 in John's Gospel until the crucifixion in 19, we are in the last week of the life of Christ. So almost more than, almost half of the Gospel of John is focused on the last week of the life of Christ. Everything else from 1 to 11 has been focused on, you know, his, the rest of his three-year ministry. And John has counted that three-year ministry down by giving us all those festivals and feast days that Jesus has either attended or not attended. And we've had that countdown, but now we come to chapter 12, and in chapter 12 through 19 is the last week. So John really bears down on this last part of the life of Christ in the presentation of his gospel. So here we are, sometime after the supper, And they're having this conversation about going and knowing. So Jesus pulls them out by asking or by making this statement. Whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And then no doubt he sits back at the table and waits. And then Thomas pipes up. He says, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Obviously, Thomas is the only honest one in the room. Because the rest of them are probably doing this too. What was that? But Jesus has told them the way because he's told them over and over, the Son of Man must be crucified. He's told them that the Son of Man must be lifted up. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And they've stood there and listened to him argue with the Sadducees and the Pharisees as they've asked him, what do you mean the Son of Man must be lifted up? What in the world does that mean? And he's explained to them and to the Pharisees and the Sadducees all that he had to say, and still they didn't get it. So Thomas is just being honest. We don't know whither thou goest. Was Thomas not listening? At least he could have said, oh, you mean to your father's house. He just got done telling him, I'm going to my father's house and prepare a mansion, and then I'm going to come back and get you. But apparently Thomas wasn't even listening to that. We do a lot of that, don't we? Don't we? We do a lot of sitting in the Lord's presence with our ears closed. We do a lot of sitting or standing or walking or running or driving with our ears closed. And that's exactly what Thomas has done for three years. And he asks this very simple question, we don't know where you're going. Thomas, what? Hello, Thomas. And let's not be down on Thomas. Thomas is just like we are. He's no different. Oh, we could could criticize Thomas for the fact that he's been in the presence of the Savior for three years and he's not paid a lick of attention to what Jesus had to say about his future. We could criticize him for that, but can we be criticized any less? 
We've heard the gospel how many times? We've heard it preached how many times? We've heard the story how many times? And yet we listen with our ears turned off. How can we know the way? Well, he doesn't know very much, does he? How can we know the way? We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Have you ever had somebody give you directions? And they would say, well, I want, you, know, you have to go to 225 Maple Street. And you say, well, I don't know where Maple Street is. Well, this is how you get there. You go down the hill and you make a right. And then there's Dairy Queen on the right-hand side. Okay, the street is just another block. And, and Mildred's house is right there on the left. And then all you do is take a turn by that great big mulberry tree on the corner. It's huge. You can't miss it. And then three, four houses down maybe, you know, there's a purple door. And, and right beside the purple door is 225 Maple. And you say, could you write that down for me? Could you, I, I didn't get that. Or you go to the Internet and you type in 225 Maple Street, blah, 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 zip code. And you look at that and you go, what is this? How is this take? That's not the way to get to Maple Street. But you try to follow it and you end up in, you know, lower Sabumafu where you didn't intend to be. I'll never forget that trip we took when Aaron was looking for colleges. And I got the map off the internet. That was the wrong plan. And it took me, I guess it was giving me the direct route. I don't know. But it was snowing to beat the band. And the further north we went, because it was in Illinois, northern, it was just south of Chicago. And the further north we went, the more snow fell. I mean, and it was snowing. And you know how it is in northern Indiana and uh, Western Indiana and Eastern Illinois, it's flat as the back of your hand. I mean, it's flat. And the wind, nothing to stop the wind. And snow is drifting over the interstate. And we got off the interstate. I was so glad we got off the interstate. But then I realized we're not anywhere nice because it was a two-lane back road. The plow had not seen it for about a week. And we're trying to make our way down that back road, and it took us through a nature preserve. Okay, that should have been my first sign of trouble. We went through this nature preserve, and we got through that, okay, and then we got to the, we, we were journeying down this road, and it was late at night, and it was dark, and it was snowy, and we get to the end of the road, and it said, this great big huge sign said, road ends here. <laughs> and we just pulled off the side of the road, and Denise and I looked at each other, and we laughed. I said, really, this is what we get, the road ends here, and past that was dirt and gravel it was a farm and the blacktop stopped right there luckily we discovered that a quick 90 degree turn to the left the road kept going and we made it It took us 10 hours to get there but we got there it was horrible it was a nightmare it really was but it was because i didn't know the way i didn't know the way and I trusted something that didn't know the way either, apparently, because I'd gone out and printed out a map. This is how you get there, all the directions and everything. And, um, and I, I'll never forget when the college visit was over and we were ready to go home, I drove to the closest gas station and I bought me a brand spanking new Illinois state map. And I said, we're going we're gonna to go home the right way this time. We are not going back the way we came. So... That's the, the situation that Thomas is in. He needs to know where Jesus is going, but he doesn't know. And he doesn't know how he's going to get there. Thomas is completely lost. Completely lost. What does Jesus say to him? One of the most famous scriptures in the New Testament, right here, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thomas just got his road map. Jesus is the way. Let me just give you just a few things. By his doctrine, by his example, by his sacrifice, by his spirit, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. In opposition to all false religions, he is the only truth of God. To the Mosaic law, which was only a shadow, not the truth or substance of the good things which were to come. And 
He's the truth in respect to all the promises of God because they all find their meaning in Christ Jesus.